So how, I mean, is this title race, race the most exciting you felt it's been for quite a while? I'd say so. I mean, I thought last year was pretty exciting mm. as well. Um, the way City caught up with Arsenal was 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 something special. But I think this year is gonna gonna top all of them. Um, the fact we've got three three teams all in form um, going right down to the wire. It's it's a tough one to call. I'm gonna ask you before you ask me who are you going with. <laughs> I can see I can see you lining yourself up to ask me. Go on. As the presenter, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I've I've always said Manchester City, but it, it it's so close to call. Um, and obviously, Man City and Arsenal play soon, yes. don't they? Yeah, so yeah. that's going to be so massive. Thirtieth, is it? Yeah, next 30th? one when yeah, we resume. Week, yeah. um, so obviously, that's going to have a huge say in everything, isn't it? Um, well, the, the, it'll be, you know, Arsenal lost the title last year because of what happened against City. Now you, are, okay, the broader the season, but the two games against City cost really them the mm-hmm. title because mm-hmm. they were in a great position. They went back to back. Two games lost to them in the running that cost them dearly. Can Arsenal this year? Go to the Etihad and win. Mm. If they go there and win, it changes everything, I feel, for Arsenal. I mean, obviously, what they have done, Arsenal, already is beat Man City. Yeah, they have, yeah. Which is a big plus. Mm. Um, and one team that's going to have a massive say in this title race is Tottenham because they still have to play every single team, I yeah. think, mm. in terms of Arsenal, Liverpool and, and Manchester City. Um, so they, they may well have a big part, as I say, to, to play in mm. this title race. Ha- go on then, let's ask you. Who's going to win before I'm, we I'm ask? A, you I mean, time. I've changed my mind about four or five times on this, to be honest with you, but I, I think I'm going to go with Liverpool. Okay. I'm going to go with Liverpool. I think they're the Castle sli- like that as a Liverpool fan. Yeah, mm. I think they're the slightly easier run in, a slightly mm. easier. The fact that it's Klopp's last year, I think, just plays as a huge motivation for them. Um, they've got one trophy in the bag already. Mm. I, I just, I think, I think momentum's going to be with Liverpool. I, I think, mm. you know, watching the game the other week, they absolutely battered Man City in that second half. And mm. I can't see any team going there and, um, and getting a result, to be honest with you. See, the only thing that bothers me, and I've said it numerous times to Natalie, that Liverpool um, give too many chances away. I know it's their style and the way they play, but they haven't been punished. And I felt United was the first time I felt that has been coming. That even though it's the FA Cup game, that teams took their chances against Liverpool because they played a number of games I've watched and it's like, wow, man, could, you know, the League Cup final against Chelsea. Mm. Chelsea had new, five great chances, didn't take them. And Liverpool ended up winning the game. I feel like Liverpool have to be better defensively to win the title. Well, it's interesting you say that because I'm. I sit slightly on the other side of that. I think, but Liverpool all score goals. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. You know I mean, it's like even if you're using the, you know the FA yeah. Cup game as an example, they still scored three in that game. You know, mm. went down to the wire again. It's like for me, Liverpool always have that ability. If they go one 0 down, two 0 down, have the ability to come back, win mm. two one, three two. I, I just always see. But them you know, goals. as a fan, when you're a fan, you tend to look at the glass half empty, don't you? <laughs> you do, you do. And you, obviously, it's quite nerve wracking, right, when they go one yeah. 0 down and two 0 down. But I don't know. They've just got that ability to score goals, especially at Anfield. You know. No, that place is special. We've seen so many great comebacks over the years. We have to come on again. <laughs> if you need me up front uh, for a couple of minutes. Just because he's yeah. back in Liverpool, <laughs> I understand. Um, but with regards to your boyhood club, Arsenal, what have you made of the job that Mikel Arteta has done to have got them now into this, it feels like a regular title race from last season and, and this year now? No, he's done. He's done unbelievable. Um, you know, he's, he really, really has. They've, they're they're proving to be consistent. Um, you know, he made some big decisions early on. Took some big names out of the, out of the squad. Um, he was questioned for a lot of that. You know, I've seen a lot of clips lately of when you know the fans are on his back, the media are mm-hmm. on his back. But he believed in what he was doing. Um, Edu clearly believed in him as well, which is an important partnership they've got there. And you know what they've done there is is unbelievable. Um, for me, the man leading the way is, is Odegaard. You know, they've got him as captain. As, he's, I mean, for me, he's player of the season. He's been unbelievable. So I think from what they've got going on upstairs in terms of the, the directors and the board, that seems to be on point. Um, and, and the energy they've got on the pitch and the, the way in which they play together and for each other, you know, they're, they're a really, really good side right now. It's such a tight call. You look at the Premier League and what we got now, nine, ten games to go. Just, whoever finds their form in this running will win it. That's basically going to catch what it's come down to. Who plays their best football. I've always said that if you beat Man City, you'll win the league. Whoever finishes in front of them will win it because mm. they're the team to beat because they're tried and trusted. They've done it so often. And I think... When you asked, obviously, who we think is going to win, and I said City, there's a part of me in the back of my head saying, is that just the lazy answer? Is that the, the default answer? Because we always expect them to come good. Yeah. And we've always been saying, I mean, this season, they still haven't been at, at, at their peak City, no. it doesn't feel. So you still think that they're going to erupt at some point, surely? 
I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Haaland and he's, he's, I mean, although he's still scored a God knows how many goals, he still hasn't been the same Haaland of last mm. year. And it's like, can he find that? Will he find it? Um, I, you, I never want to say won't. You know, I never, you never want to write off City. I think that's why we're all sat here like, yeah. whoa, City, they've got the experience. They've yeah. done it for so many years. Um, but as I said, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go towards Liverpool. I'm, can, I'm leaning towards Liverpool. Can I ask you, as a Liverpool fan, you played under Jürgen. Yeah, he yeah. was there for a period. What was he like? He was really, really, really good, you know. So he he came into the club, and I mean, he was only there for I think a couple of months before I joined. So I was still relatively new, and he was just sort of setting his standards, creating an environment that 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 has got him to where they are today. And uh, I was always on the opposite team, so I was like, I was never in the starting eleven. So I was on the opposite team, and yeah. the way in which he was building them up to press, it just became harder and harder and harder <laughs> to play out. And I was walking away from there, going. This is going to be something special. Um, he had everyone buying into it, and he, and he's a good guy, and I think that's so important, and it's so underrated, you know, um, mm. amongst managers in conversations. Actually, being a good guy go, goes a long way. Mm. That's so interesting, though, when you say about the building up of, of this press that we we know of Liverpool, and I mean, how long do you think it took until it sort of clicked for them? It, it took well, as long well, as I was you. there, really. Yeah. I'd say I'd say um, it got better and better each week, but it. it you know, never really got going until I'd say probably towards the end of the season, and yeah. then obviously leading into. Then he had his own preseason yeah. where he could, you know, recruit through players as well, get rid of the players he, he didn't want, um, and then he, you know, really started to build into it from there. But I saw the improvements, you know, week in week out, and 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 that he put a lot of hours in. You know, the boys put a lot of hours in. Mm. You know, uh, we were training before games. You know, we we're going out on the pitch for for an hour doing walkthroughs. You know, there was never. Um, I think the first three months I never had a day off. You know, it was it was relentless, and um, they got they got the results that they deserve. You know, over over his, over his reign, they they've been incredibly successful. Mm. And that takes, as he said, incredible energy for him to put in each day to motivate mm -hmm. and get the players to do what they want. Because it's it's like you said earlier, it's not one player you're dealing with. You're dealing with a whole squad of twenty five. You're having to motivate every one of them to yeah. do what you believe in. Yeah, and you've got 25 superstars as well, right? Mm. So you've also got to manage their ego, manage their expectations. I mean, he does it slightly different in the sense he has young players in the squad as well, which I think would obviously be slightly easier to, yeah. to manage. Um, they add that little bit of hunger, that little bit of freshness, and they're willing to do whatever. Um, yeah. Pep does it slightly different. He literally has a squad of twenty-five superstars and manages them. So you know, I look at all all of the top managers, and I, I you know I take my hat off to all of them because what they what they what they achieve week in week out is is something special. And um, I've been fortunate enough, as I said, to work under Klopp, to to work under Brendan Rodgers, and and a long list of uh, good managers.